40 years' experience has gone into building the TVR. The key to success is the design of the car, a traditional British sports car in every sense of the word. It's the fastest, most powerful one-make series on British circuits. From the outside, they certainly look exciting to drive. But what's it like behind the wheel of a TBR? We asked Chris Hodgetts. Yes, they're a handful. Um, every motor car is a handful until you've sorted it out. And really, it would be rather unjust if I couldn't sort the motor car out because of my previous experience anyway. And we've sorted the cars out. Uh, they are a brute to drive, but they're enjoyable when they're right. So. I want to drive a safe, quick motor car, and that's that's the reason that I enjoy doing them. It's good. The tubular steel space frame chassis provides enormous strength. The suspension is fully adjustable, but John Kent had another problem after practice. Yeah, we're having to change the wheel bearings. We were protested last night. Uh, both the first car and the second car on the grid were protested. The protest was upheld this morning, so we've just got to now to change the wheel bearings back to a slightly smaller size and uh, yes we're starting from the back of the grid. Can you make up the lost time? Yeah I hope so, it certainly gives you every incentive. Uh, the people that are currently now at the front of the grid were the ones that protested us so I guess that gives you uh, uh, every, every incentive to get after them and uh, see what we can do. So let's have a look at the grid for the start of this first race of the Championship 1990. In pole position, Steve Cole with next to him Richard Cadburn. Mark Hales, the journalist, with Colin Blower alongside him on row two. And then the experienced Jerry Marshall and Simon Wayne. Bob Sands and Chris Maris, Mike Hyde and Martin Crass, and Chris Hodgetts and John Kent. And these two on the back of the grid as a result of that infringement in the regulations which they were talking about earlier on. All engines running, a bit of a creep there from the front row, but a lovely start. Side by side towards Old Hall Corner. It looks as if pole position man hasn't got the advantage. Yes, he has. Yes, number three, Steve Cole in pole position. Lots of experience there, bags of experience with TBRs and Cole making it work as he comes down now round the cascades. And there's a spin there and off into the bank goes number seven, Colin Blower with a resounding whack. Richard Cameron, the other man involved. And Cameron, in fact, the man who has the spin and it's Blower taking evasive action that sends him off there into the bank. Up comes the bonnet. In fact, the fiberglass hardly damaged. Fortunately, neither of the drivers hurt either. But a fair amount of steam around there as a very, very unhappy Colin Blower walks away from it all. But in the lead now, very comfortably, Steve Cole. Behind Cole, number one, Mark Hales, the motoring bearded journalist. And then we look behind him with third man now closing up a little bit. But here's these first two coming down towards Nickerbrook. Difficult corner to get round. 55 there is Jerry Marshall. Experienced hand, as we said, started his careers with minis and TBRs many years ago. And genial Jerry, very anxious here to go well. Obviously, Hodgetts could be a threat in this race. We don't know about him and John Kent as regards progress is concerned. But looking down the sheet, it would seem that at the moment, the progress is being made by Hodgetts. Puff of smoke there on the leading car. Steve Cole with about a couple of three cars lengths now from Mark Hales, then Jerry Marshall. And Cole driving smoothly, putting one wheel on the concrete, down the hill, difficult part of Oldham Park this, into the Cascades. The steam from the accident that you saw on the first lap there. And there is Hodgetts. Hodgetts coming up a pace. Hard on the tail there of number 26, Simon Wayne. is Chris Hodgetts. Through and up past Simon Wayne, just like that in the most difficult corner of the whole lot because you come out of that corner and then you're on the brakes with the car slightly out of balance as you come into the hairpin now and down towards the new chicane here, Falston chicane. Slightly left, then a right, and a left again. Out of it, up over hilltop and diving down towards Nickerbrook. Still the same order, but we are watching Tremendous progress by Chris Hodgetts. Hales closing a little bit as well. Hodgetts in fifth place already. The next man on his list will be Chris Maris. Druid's corner. Bigger runoff now than there was there before. You'll notice the inside front wheel lifting. These cars, 0 to 60 miles an hour in under four seconds, 100 miles an hour in approximately eight seconds at a maximum of about 165 miles an hour, which is quick by anybody's standards. 
characteristic puff of smoke there. Another thing that they do is get their power down very well, and up comes Hodges into fourth place. So Cole, Hales, Marshall, Hodges, lap three, Maris and Wayne, the next two, but the big question now is, having made up for that bad start, just how far up the field can Chris Hodgetts go? Hodgetts, who made his name driving small saloons, but prior to that, of course, had driven clubman's cars, has driven virtually every sort of car all over Europe. Has also been seen in Australia too. Very experienced, runs the driver's school at Donington Park and tries his hands still at all sorts of racing. Closing the gap constantly on what has now become a pretty high-speed train. 55, Jerry Marshall on the back of the group could very well be his next victim. And Jerry won't like this, but I don't think there's very much he can do about it. Underbreaking into Nickerbrook. A tight line in, comes out, doesn't even touch the concrete, so he's well under control and getting the power down superbly well. Limited slip diff, of course, which does help a great deal as when that front wheel lifts and the right wheel tends to all the power still goes down on the grass not again number one mike hales hales in trouble lost himself a couple of cars lengths fell back into the clutches of hodgetts hodgetts looking for a way this is the brave place and taking it under braking into old hall takes a very early apex you can't always get away with that, but he does it, uses the concrete coming out, but that doesn't matter, and he's up to second place already. So the man with the pressure on now is Steve Cole, and the man applying the pressure, number 15, Chris Hodgetts. Hodgetts closing hand over fist, he's quicker into the corners, he's quicker out of the corners. Looking on the inside, decided that discretion was the better part of valour there, but the door is open. has, I think, given him due notice that he has every intention of coming by, and he'll probably wait until they come down towards Nickerbrook. Looks possibly at the outside of Hilltop, takes himself right up on the tail, pulls alongside, and now will try the demon out breaking manoeuvre again. But well aware of that development was Master Cole. Steve Cole keeps the door closed. He too, incidentally, teaches driving, but he does it here at Alton Park, so a little bit of local knowledge here coming into it, and such is the closeness of this dice that Hales, of course, is not being dropped. Two cars as close as this are together, and inevitably the pace drops a little bit and everybody closes up, but here is Hodges on the inside, into Lodge, where the ground drops away from you, the camber's against you, the car skitters across, and you've got to be so careful to miss that bank there as you come up and flash past the pits, and he does it with Pinash. Hodgetts, Cole, Hales, Marshall, Marnies and Wayne, the top six here then, in this first round of the TVRs at Oton Park, living up to their name as really exciting sports cars. The V8 Rover engine, which of course saw bags of development in its three and a half litre form, and can trace its ancestry back to an original BMW design, which was sold onto General Motors and thence onto Rover, and in three litre form originally formed the block of the Repco engine that Jack Brabham used to win the World Championship way back in 1966. Four and a half litres now, of course, producing nearly 400 horsepower, probably slightly more. That's Marshall, that's Marshall in trouble, taking the escape road there. Now, Lord alone knows why, except Jerry Marshall, but I've no doubt given the opportunity, he'll tell us. Over Hilltop, down towards Nickerbrook once more. The sun blending on the cars as Mark Hales there in number one driver who made his debut driving of all things a Marcus with a four three liter engine but is at home in saloons as he is in sports cars very fine road tester flashes of flame on the overrun there from the exhaust holding on to his third place and that's a spin that's number 11 Ian Mitchell having the father and mother of spins there and sitting there wondering how it happened or why it happened and Jerry Marshall knows both how and why the only thing is we don't know how and why but we suspect it's something at the front of the car. As we return to the action with number eight, Peter Wheeler, the chairman's car, immaculate as it should be. Having his first race and going very well because in front of him, one of the McAlpine brothers who have got a bit more experience than he has. Number 19 then is Richard McAlpine. 
marries with Simon Wayne behind him, son of Malcolm Wayne. Simon used to start his racing in Formula Ford, I seem to recall, has now gone to sports cars, and they're fighting it out for fourth and fifth places. Wayne looking at the inside. I think he's trying the impossible manoeuvre. Yes, it was. All he's got for his pains is a fairly hefty whack on the bonnet. And it's out 25 yards or so behind. But it's the last lap for one man who's at least 25 yards in front indeed more. A superb drive here by Chris Hodgetts, who'd seen him come up right the way through the field. The car beautifully balanced. If Chris can't sort it, I doubt there's anybody else who could. And he will have paid particular attention, I'm sure, to sorting out this car. He's very determined to dominate this championship. He saw Jeff Allen do it last year. He wants to do it this year. In the motor trade, partially still, comes from uh, Pershaw and comes streaking down here. Whoops, another big moment for Ian Mitchell there. And that was almost total disaster. Faces the wrong way, collects it together. We go back again to the leader. Through Druids for the last time, on his way, on the undulating course here at Alton Park. A real driver's circuit, one of the best in the country, if not the best. Through Lodge Corner, up over the rise there, and towards the chequered flag, Chris Hodgetts, the winner. And so, the official result at the end of round one, Hodgetts, Steve Cole, Mark Hales, Chris Murray, Simon Wayne, and Bob Sands. It's on from Oakland Park to the second round of the championship at Donington Park. A totally different circuit and a different challenge to the TVR Tuscans. Chris Hodgetts in pole position here. And there's Hodgetts behind the wheel of the car, flanked by Jerry Marshall, the very experienced Marshall, who's going to give him a run for his money. Here's the full grid, with Hodgetts and Marshall on the front row. John Kent, another recalcitrant man from the first round who had his problems. He started from the back row with Steve Cole alongside him. Nick Four, he's best known for driving Porsches at Le Mans. And Simon Wayne next ahead. Away they go from the start, and it's a superb start for Marshall. That's Martin Crass, who practiced out of session owing to an incident and starts 10 seconds behind, but he's away. So it's the full field down to Redgate Corner and a superb start there by number 27, John Kent, who snatches the lead as they come down the hill. Down through the Craner curves, probably the most difficult part of Donington. They string themselves out a little bit and into the old hairpin. It comes upon you very quickly and that grass is very deceptive and if you get on it, you're in trouble. A wild snake there by number seven, Colin Blower. He was out of the first round very early on, you might remember. And we've got yellow flags waved there because we've got a spinner off camera. We haven't picked up quite who that is yet. We probably will in a moment or two. And that's Hodgetts through to second place. Hodgetts through into second place there. And looking as if he means it behind Kent. The man who's doing the following is Jerry Marshall. And he's not too happy to do it. And here's the man who spun. Well, you can see a bit of debris on the road there. 26. The... Simon Wayne car, who started well up and obviously lost it in the biggest possible way, but looks as if he can carry on. Out of the Melbourne head, up now towards Goddard's. Hodgett seeking to dominate this round, just as he dominated the first round of the championship. The question is, can he make it? And these two cars, both prepared by the XBRM mechanic Dave Lampett, and showing a credit to him as they're in first and second places. Hodgett leads them, holding on to him, John Kent in second place. Into and out of Redgate, Jerry Marshall in third. Richard Cabin well up, and so is Nick Four in 44. And on the grass there, that's Mitchell losing it again. He had an exciting time at Alton, you might recall. He's having it again here. Round the old hairpin. That's at the bottom of the Craner curve. You've got to get this right. And then there is a slight left-hander before you come to McLean's, and that's the corner, in fact, that everybody approaches slightly wrongly. You can actually get round McLean's a great deal quicker than would apparently appear to be the case. And that's what Hodgetts does. Kicks up the dust on the outside a little bit. On his way now towards Coppice. Short piece of straight. Coppice has two apexes if you get it wrong and one if you get it right and goes out onto the straight on what is the Grand Prix circuit here, of course. So Hodgetts leads. Kent in second place. Marshall in third place. Cabin in fourth place. Into the braking area. Left onto the 
little S there that takes them on now down towards the Melbourne hairpin. Nine is Chris Marries, who nearly loses it. And 91 in sympathy spins his chances away. Collects it back together again, so James McAlpine did not do any public works there, just some private ones. We're in car now with John Kent, watching the leader as we come up now towards Redgate Corner. Hodgetts, Kent, Marshall, Cabin, Thor and Blur, the top six. And pulling wide there is, for some reason, best known to himself, the man who's dominated the race so far, Hodgetts. And I think Hodgetts has a problem. Kent takes over the lead. Hodgetts loses another place there to Jerry Marshall. And obviously there is a problem for Chris Hodgetts, the man who won the first round. And let's listen carefully to that engine. And it doesn't sound quite right as it goes past there. So he definitely is falling further back down the field, will take no further part in the battle for the lead, which now is in the hands of John Kent, with behind him Jerry Marshall. Now Marshall, who cut his teeth on TVRs and minis, went on to drive Vauxhalls, and this is the luckless Hodgetts pulling off. It looks as if he might limp back to the pits. We were talking about Jerry Marshall here on the outside. Not the place to do it as they go around Melbourne. You can try late braking, but you go off there very wide and you've got a problem. Richard Cabin holding on to his fourth place and Marshall getting a bit crossed up there as he comes out of Goddard's and loses a bit of ground. So Kent, Marshall, Nick Four, Cole, Maris and Cabin now, the top six. And Kent has the redoubtable Marshall to deal with. Behind him there's a problem. And that is number seven, Colin Blower, really having a very unlucky time. Richard Cabin has spun too, so that's going to affect the overall order. But one thing that's going to affect John Kent is Jerry Marshall. You recall that he was faithful to Vauxhalls till he went to drive the Dolomite Spins in the British Saloon Championship. That was punctuated with a huge accident. And Jerry, in fact, has not been so active in racing over the last two or three years. But he's back with a vengeance with TBRs and outbreaks there, brushes against the side of Kent's car. Kent flicks it straight. Marshall swallows hard. That was not deliberate. He outbreaked. There was nowhere to go. He does it again here. Comes in deep, gets it sideways, and scrubs away the speed. And Jerry, I would have thought, would have been an experienced enough hand to realize that that maneuver was never going to work. And John Kent it is. You can hear the discs squealing for sympathy past the crowded pit area here at Donington Park and up again towards Redgate Corner. Kent refusing to be rattled by close attentions of the Marshall kind behind. The Marshall trying to close the gap again. That's Ian Mitchell having another of his well-known moments. Comes back, fortunately, without getting himself involved in the traffic and just missed the tail there of the chairman. All's well that ends well. Here is Mitchell again, came in on the wrong line. Big problems here for Wheeler and for Crass. Crass misses him. Wheeler is not so fortunate. But look at the front of Mitchell's car. And Wheeler has stopped on the grass, but I think we'll be able to continue. Neither driver injured. Probably the most frightened man of the lot, Martin Crass. And he didn't do anything. And there, another spin, and that was number nine. Chris Murray's collects it together again. And yes, the chairman, Peter Wheeler, continues on his sedate way. Oh, we'll have a word to do to say about that. Another spin. That's Peter Drawn. Very rare that we see Peter Drawn make a mistake like that. He and his brother, well-known motoring journalists and both capable drivers, as we're in car with Kent once again. And that is Marshall. That is Marshall who's got on the inside and Marshall has come through. And Jerry Marshall takes over the lead and this is the second round of the TBR Tuscan Challenge at Donington Park. And John Kent is going to like that, not at all. He's got the tighter line coming out there. You'll see he's closed the gap immensely. Marshall goes in far too wide, far too deep there and Kent on the inside. But the door is shut firmly in his face. Marshall taking no prisoners. Opposite lock as he comes out, snatches back the lead. They're side by side, going down. 
towards Redgate corner on the inside, number 27 comes through. John Kent retakes the lead. Now all he's got to do, in fact, is to steady himself. He does, comes out, uses all the road, a bit of the concrete. All the fours in 44, Nick Four, with Lamont experience to his credit, with Porsche holding off the man who spun early in the race, Steve Cole, who's caught up quite considerably, but he's going to have an awful job to get by. We rejoin the leaders with a few corners to go before they pass the checkered flag, and John Kent very much in the lead, Marshall weaving a bit under braking, but Kent has got this very nicely under control. Marshall tried oh so hard through the S there, kicked up the dust. Here's Nick Four holding off Steve Cole. Cole right on the ragged edge there, holding on for all he's worth, but I don't think there's much he can do about it. And here, John Kent comes into Goddard's. A tight left-hand hairpin, gets his boot well in, down goes the power, and crosses the line to win the second round of the TBR Tuscan Challenge here at Donington Park. Kent the winner, Marshall second, Nick Four third, Steve Cole fourth, Richard Cabin fifth, and there is Kent getting his laurels of victory and the kiss and the winner's hat. And Cole leads the championship from Hodgetts and Marys in second place, then Kent and Marshall, the two McAlpines and Bob Sands next up. Two rounds down, 11 to go in the TBR Tuscan.